So you want an affordable skincare routine to clear your hyperpigmentation. Well, you're in the right place because in this video, almost everything is under $15 with the exception of a couple of dark spot treatments that are in the $20 range. So keep watching. Now we go through all the reasons why you get hyperpigmentation and how you can avoid it in two whole playlists on this channel. So make sure you check that out. But the main thing to understand about hyperpigmentation is that irritation can lead to inflammation that can lead to hyperpigmentation. So you want to be gentle with your skin. Slowly introduce new products into your skincare routine. And if you have never tried a product or an ingredient before, go with the lower percentage and slowly work your way in. There's actually a video on it. It's called, you, you know, your skin may be sensitive and you don't even know, check that out for tea on that. Because the last thing you want to do is to irritate your skin with a product that is too strong for you. First up, cleansers. Now you want a gentle cleanser that is for your skin type and current skincare needs, keeping in mind the climate where you live can affect this as well. For example, I live in New York City, most times of year I could use the same cleanser in my routine, but when it gets to that cold, dry winter, I might need something a little bit more nourishing. Now, your cleanser should not be making your skin feel squeaky clean. If it does, you might be using the wrong cleanser. Over cleansing can impact the skin's barrier, which means the skin cannot protect you the way that it should, leaving you susceptible to irritation that we already established that irritation can lead to inflammation that can lead to hyperpigmentation. A couple of cleanser examples to check out include, but of course are not limited to, the La Roche-Posay Lipicar Wash. Now this is something where you can really get your money's worth because it comes in a big old container and you can use it for both your face and your body. This is made with sensitive eczema prone skin and mine and doesn't contain ingredients that are typically known to irritate the skin. But of course, if you have known allergies, you know, you make sure you scan the ingredients list to make sure that the known allergy is not in the product. For acne prone skin, there's the classic Neutrogena oil-free acne wash. This contains 2% salicylic acid. This is at a percentage that works well for many without drying out the skin. Salicylic acid works by getting in the pores, clearing out the excess dirt and gunk, which is helpful in the case if you have oily congested skin and are acne prone. But it can be drying for some people. So if you're looking for something that has salicylic acid but at a lower percentage, Ola Choice is a 0.5% salicylic acid cleanser that's worth looking into. So check it out. That and everything that I mentioned in this video will be linked to the description box. Now a little note here, some people, some people, keyword some, may benefit from just rinsing the skin with water in the morning and then moving on to the continuing steps in your skincare routine, but you gotta, of course, cleanse with a cleanser at night. Me, I need a cleanser in the morning and the night, but you have to kind of figure out what works best for your skin, your situation, and it may change from season to season. Now, dark spot treatment. Now to keep things simple so you're not having to layer on product after product, I looked for dark spot treatments that contain multiple tyrosinase inhibitors. That's a word that basically means it, it kind of hinders your melanocytes from producing excess melanin, which is, you know, the dark spot that you see on your skin. For a full explanation of this, make sure you check out Dr. Alexa Stevens's video. She goes through it. She has a diagram, breaks it on down. It's a really great watch. I will link it below. First up, the Neutrogena Stubborn Spot Night Treatment, and this is fragrance free. This contains vitamin C, which helps to brighten and even the skin tone. It also contains retinol, which helps with the skin's regeneration process, which is the process by which it repairs and renews itself. And it helps to sloth off the dark spots and curbs the overproduction of melanin. Now, of course, this is a treatment that you would use at night, which it suggests in its name. Next up, the Ambi Skincare Fade Cream. This does contain 2% hydroquinone, which you can now only get by prescription in the US. I am guessing that whatever was out on the shelves can still be sold. Here's the thing with hydroquinone. It is considered the gold standard in dermatology when it comes to fading pigmentation. However, it is not meant to be used long-term. So you don't want to use hydroquinone long-term because then you can run into some issues. What you wanna do, use it two months on, two months off. 
Not a long-term solution, got it? Good. But the Ambi, again, 2% hydroquinone. It also contains alpha hydroxy acid, AKA AHAs, which help to exfoliate the skin. And it also contains vitamin E, which is an antioxidant that helps with the free radical damage and all the gunk that be coming for our skin during the day. Next up, the Specific Beauty Dark Spot Treatment. This one has no fragrance added. This is also created by a black dermatologist, Heather Woolery Lloyd. This contains licorice root, which has anti inflammatory inflammatory properties and also helps to curb the overproduction of melanin. It also has retinol and AHAs, which we just talked about, you know, two, two seconds ago. Now, another affordable spot treatment, the Alpha Skin Care Dual Spot Skin Lightener. Now, unfortunately, it has an unfortunate name. <laughs> this does not have enough of the active ingredient in it to, you know, change your whole complexion, which is not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to get to the dark spots, okay? So this contains 2% hydroquinone, which again, as of, I believe, 2021, you, you have to have a prescription to get, but I'm guessing whatever's on the shelves is what's on the shelves, so get it while you can. Got the 2% hydroquinone, vitamin E, and 10% glycolic acid. I actually tried this out a couple of years ago. It was part of my routine when I had an issue with dark spots recurring. I have a blog post about it and a video about it if you want to check it out. But that is one of the products that I really, really, really loved using during that time. Really effective and not very expensive. But again, <laughs> Products containing hydroquinone are not meant to be used long term. Two months on, two months off. Next up, moisturizers. Some of the best moisturizers for hyperpigmentation contain vitamin F, AKA fatty acids, alpha linoleic acid, and linoleic acid. So these fatty acids have anti-inflammatory properties to them that not only help with dry skin, but also inhibit tyrosinase. Remember, that's the fancy term that means that it stops the melanocytes from overproducing melanin. So we learned all about vitamin F moisturizers from Dr. Alexis Stevens' video, so make sure you check that out for the full tea. Now I'm gonna give you some examples, but if you're already using a moisturizer that works fine for you and your lifestyle and the climate and all that other stuff, you keep on using it, but here's some examples. Now, first up, and I gotta look at my phone because it's a long title, the Elf Happy Hydration Cream plus hemp-derived cannabis sativa seed oil moisturizer. So this is a rich cream that from the reviews say that it won't leave a greasy residue. It contains hemp seed oil, niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, and no added fragrance. Now, from what I gather, this might be better suited if you have dry skin, but if you have oily skin, this might be a great nighttime moisturizer or something that you might want to use if you live in a very cold climate. Next up, the Ordinary Natural Moisturizing Factors plus HA. Although this moisturizer is really light in texture, I did find that when I tried it out that it left my skin pretty shiny. But if you're someone with dry skin or if you have oily skin, you don't mind the shine, this might be a good option for you. Now, before you say F it to the vitamin F, one good thing that you can do is if your moisturizer does not contain vitamin F, what you can do is add an oil that contains vitamin F in it. Now, when it comes to vitamin F oils, Dr. Alexis did tell us in her video that you probably don't wanna to spend too much coin on it because these can go you know, bad fast for lack of a better term. So one option that you may want to look into, the ordinary ascorbyl tetroisopalmitate solution in 20% vitamin F might be up your alley. And I'm gonna link it in the description box along with everything else that was mentioned in this video. Next up, sunscreen. Now, if you don't know, you need sunscreen in your skincare routine, period. But especially if you are trying to fade hyperpigmentation. Sun exposure, namely that punk ass UVA, AKA the aging rays, invisible light, worsen pigmentation. So trying to fade this, these dark spots, the melasma, whatever you got, without sunscreen on, you playing yourself. Now, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time here on sunscreen because there's so many videos. As a matter of fact, there's two playlists, one on mineral sunscreens and one general sunscreens for darker skin playlist that you should check out if you want more information. But I'm gonna give you a couple of examples that are affordable. Now, first up, if you're looking for a mineral sunscreen, which a lot of people like because it contains zinc oxide, which has some healing properties to it, but also some people prefer mineral sunscreens because sometimes the filters used in chemical sunscreens irritate the skin. However, 
Mineral sunscreens are notorious for looking wiggity, wiggity, wiggity wet when darker skin because while zinc oxide has these healing properties, it's also a white pigment. Titanium dioxide, which sometimes you'll also see combined in a mineral sunscreen formula, is also a white pigment. Now, a lot of brands don't do a good job formulating these white pigments to look good on our chocolate skin tones. Um, however, Olay's Hydrating Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30 is one that made my top ranking of mineral sunscreens that I tried out in 2021. I try out a lot of mineral sunscreens for this channel. So make sure you check that out. Now the price range can be, you know, up there sometimes depending on where you shop. Like I think I saw it at almost $30 or more at Ulta and it was cheaper at Target. So definitely shop around for this particular sunscreen because you can get a better deal. Also, I have found that some of the better mineral sunscreens do tend to be a little bit up there in price, at least more expensive than the chemical ones. Another option, this is a chemical sunscreen. It's the Kroger Invisible Sunscreen Gel SPF 40. If you are a fan of Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen, this performs and looks so much similar to the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen, but at a fraction of the price, and you get a big dirty stinking bottle of it, as opposed to the smaller bottle that you get with the Super Goop. So I did a video comparing the two together, so make sure you check that out for more tea. And another affordable option, the Nivea Sun Water Gel SPF 35. This is a Japanese sunscreen, which I don't have a favorite sunscreen, like you, like, at any given time, I'm using whatever sunscreen happens to be in my beauty cabinet. I'm trying out a lot of sunscreens pretty often, but typically I like really lightweight sunscreen formulations and a lot of Korean and Japanese sunscreen brands make sunscreens that I like. So you can find really cosmetically elegant, basically meaning that it's gonna look and feel good on your skin, sunscreens from Japanese and Korean brands and some of them are at really great prices. I just did a video on a bunch, so make sure you check that out for more information. Exfoliants. Now, a lot of these exfoliants will tell you to use it daily. Now, that can be a lot. Two to three times a week, I think, is probably like a really good maximum sweet spot to be exfoliating because if you over exfoliate, it's quite like over cleansing. You can impair your skin's barrier, which means that your skin's barrier is not able to protect you in the way that it should, which can lead you susceptible to irritation, that can lead to inflammation, that can lead to hyperpigmentation. Now, a lot of things that we do count as exfoliation. Simply rubbing your hands on your face can count as a form of manual exfoliation, but there are also physical exfoliants like scrubs, there are chemical exfoliants, BHA, glycolic acid, so on and so forth, and you also have enzyme exfoliators. Let's go over a couple of affordable options. So Black Opal has a PHA plus BHA exfoliating toner. This is something that I actually tried in a video where I had a full routine that was under about like $52 or something like that. So you can check that out for more information on that. There's also the Natorium 2% BHA exfoliating toner. Now this may be beneficial in your routine if you have oily and or acne prone skin, because as we mentioned before, salicylic acid goes into the pore, clears out the gunk, and it also helps to exfoliate the skin. Now another option, the Tony Moly I'm Rice Exfoliating Enzyme Cleanser. Now I have not used an enzyme exfoliator in quite some time and you know this one piqued my interest and I was like "Ooh, do I need to go down a rabbit hole of enzyme exfoliators and then I was like nah girl chill because you, you you already got what you need in your, your cabinet chill okay so I'm a chill so that's a basic routine your cleanser your dark spot treatment your moisturizer, your sunscreen, and routine exfoliation. Now you may need to add a couple of other things depending on your current skincare needs, maybe some acne products, maybe a retinol, so on and so forth. However, I got a video for you that will help you to figure out what else you might need in your routine, as well as a video on how to, you know, slowly introduce new things into your skincare routine, you know, because you want to try to avoid irritation as much as you can. Now also keep in mind that if your dark spots are older, they may be less, you know, responsive to over-the-counter products and you're probably going to have to have a pro step right on in. And even when you have a pro step in, it still may take some time in a series of treatments. Some treatments that they may suggest for you can include 
topical prescription creams. It can also include chemical peels, lasers, so on and so forth. So the best way to figure out what you will need for your treatment is to find a Skin of Color Pro near you, have them evaluate your skin, and they will help you on with your journey. Now, there is an ongoing series on this channel where subscribers come on and talk to us about their pro skin treatments, you know, the good and the bad. I also have some videos where I spoke with some dermatologists going over a couple of different procedures as well as some procedures that I have done myself. So the information is there on the channel. Make sure you check that out, as well as a video on how to find a Skin of Color Pro in the first place. And now, as you may have noticed on the screen, I am leaving you here with some videos for further study. So make sure you check them out. Subscribe to this channel. Make sure you turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a thing, because there's a lot of really great information on this channel. And you know, I like to think that I give you a good vibe. You know, you a good vibe over here. Let me know in the comments, have you tried or would you try any of the products that were mentioned in this video? Get all chitty chatty. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.